Having a balanced mix is going to make your track sound powerful, clear and punchy. Hey guys, Dilby here, welcome back to the channel. So last week I did a video explaining a straightforward method for mixing kick and bass and it seemed to have resonated with quite a lot of people. Today we're going to take it one step further and look at balancing the rest of the mix. Having a balanced mix is going to make your track sound powerful, clear and punchy. There are lots of additional details that go into mixing like EQ, compression, etc. But having a balanced mix is going to make the biggest difference to the end result. Balancing a mix is a detailed skill that takes time and practice to master. But approaching it with a clear strategy is going to take out a lot of the guesswork and allow you to progress much faster. So let's get into it. In the last video, I showed you how to use a reference track to get a starting point for balancing your low end. I'm not going to repeat that all here, but I will recap the basics and the video will be linked down below. First of all, we set the kick to a level which gives us plenty of headroom for the rest of the mix. Next we use a side chain to duck the bass and make space for the kick. Then we use a reference track to get a starting volume for our bass before tweaking it to suit the track. And then finally we process the kick and bass to gel them together. So moving on to the rest of the mix, it's really important that we have a plan so we know what we're trying to achieve and we know what order to bring in the different elements of the track. This is going to make the decision making process a whole lot easier. The balancing strategy I use when I'm mixing is to work through the elements in order of importance and then bring them into the mix. This means I'm always giving preference to the most important elements in the balance of the track. This means they're going to be louder in the mix and the supporting elements are going to be quieter. So we started with the low end and next we're going to get the drum sounding nice and full. Then we'll bring in the hook and the other main elements. This might be a vocal, a piano, a synth, whatever's the memorable part of your track. Then we add the supporting melodic and vocal elements in order of importance. In order to make the demonstration more straightforward, I'm using quite a simple example, whereas in reality your track might be a bit more complicated and have a few more layers. So that's going to mean that there's a few more decisions to be made about what's important to bring in and when. So I like to bring in my core drums next, and this is like a clap, a snare, whatever's playing on the two and four and then my main hat or hats. The analogy I gave with the low end was about building a strong foundation and this is a continuation of that. We're adding in the main drum elements, the backbone of the rhythm track. Pro tip here, if you're using top loops for your core drums, I suggest you cut out the clap and put it onto a separate track. That way you're going to be able to balance the volumes independently. All right guys, so here we are inside Ableton and what I've done is taken the loop from the kick and bass mixing tutorial and expanded it a bit so that we've got a bit more elements to work with. So now we're going to mix the core drums and the first element that we're going to mix in is the clap. For me when I'm writing I tend to put the, the clap too high and I've noticed this is something that happens a lot also in mix downs I do for my clients. I think it's something to do with the way that we perceive the loudness of the clap when we're listening on headphones or near field monitors in our studio as opposed to how loud it seems when it's like in a club and it's 100 decibels or something. If the clap is too loud in the club it can be like really piercing and really harsh. So we want to try and be a little bit subtle and have it probably a bit lower than you'd actually think. I find as a general rule, when you play the kick and then add the clap, it should increase by somewhere between about one to two dB. And then you just kind of adjust it to taste. Okay, so the kick is peaking here around 3.3. And then we add in the clap. And you can see from this that the, the clap is actually panned slightly to the right. So on the right hand side that's actually adding like a, almost another one and a half dBs of gain. So what we'll do is just bring that clap down one dB. So we just do that until it sounds about right and it's within that range that I suggested. So the next element is the open hat. Now with open hats, I tend to put them a couple of dBs 
lower than the volume of the kick. Uh, when the track is mastered, it's going to be pushed up in volume with the limiting. Um, there's also generally other elements playing in the same position, which is going to push up the volume of everything in that position. So if the bass, if a bass note is playing at the same time as the, as the open hat, then it's going to get pushed up. Um, we'll show you how that works. So let's. Okay, so that should be about right. Now with the bass line. Now I don't suggest that you mix with your eyes, but this is an amazing tool for just checking things. As DJs, we're really familiar with what a well-mixed track looks like as a waveform using like record box or tractor or whatever. Vinyl DJs, maybe not so much. But that head looks like it's sitting about right, could maybe be a bit louder, but when we add the other elements on top, it's probably going to come up in level. Next I'm going to bring in the supporting drums and percussion. At this point I'll also start to utilise panning to give these elements their own space in the mix and introduce a bit more width. I'm also going to take this opportunity to decide if any of these elements are unnecessary and if they're just taking up space in the mix. This is an important step to getting a clean and punchy mix. You should really aim to remove anything that isn't adding real value to the track. So following on with the same principle of adding elements in order of importance, I'm going to add, now add in the secondary drum elements and level those up with the, those kind of core drums that we've got sounding good and punchy. A great way to find a good balance for these secondary elements is to bring the level way down, use the arrow keys on your keyboard to bring it up until it sounds at the right volume. Then you take a note of the value of your track volume and increase the volume way up, then bring it down until it sounds about right. Then you compare the two levels and find um, a balance in between them and usually that should be the about right. The benefit of doing this is that it takes out of the equation any issues with the way that humans perceive loudness. So first I'm going to add the top loop. Okay, so minus 14. And minus 14 again. Right, so that tells me that minus 14 is about right. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention is I'm not looking at the value when I'm doing this, I'm listening. If you have trouble focusing on the number on the fader, try closing your eyes. Cutting out one sense allows your brain to focus more on another sense, so you can hear more intensely. So the next element I think I will add is this skippy groove. Okay, so we had minus 16 and minus 14. So minus 15 is half of that. Now I'm going to quickly go through and balance the rest of the drums using the same technique.
So one thing worth noting here, what I'm doing is just making a shorter loop brace on another clip so that I can hear that more frequently because it takes four bars for it to repeat. And then I'm just going to go back to playing the original version once I've found a good level. So it's also important to keep listening uh, like that one. I worked out the average and it still sounded a bit quiet. So I just brought it up an extra dB. Now this extra loop was the last element that I put into the drum groove, which is why I'm mixing it in last. I just added it to bring a bit of extra thickness to the loop. I'm not really finding a volume where it seems to sit into place. I'm wanting to push it down very low in the mix and it's still kind of bugging me, which is telling me that it probably shouldn't be there. This is something that's really important to do at this stage, is anything that you can take out of the mix at this stage, do it. Your mix is going to sound more clean and more punchy the less things it's got in it because there's more space for all of those elements. So anything that is unnecessary and isn't adding to the mix, get rid of it. So now at this stage, I'm going to do a bit of panning just to kind of try and give things their own space to sit in. Cool. So there the mix starts to sound balanced, it's getting nice and wide, and everything's got its own place to sit there. It sounds full and punchy, but not overcrowded. So now I have a really well-balanced low end and drum groove. In House and Techno, this is the foundation of the track, and it really needs to be dialed in right. Next I'm going to introduce the hook. This is the theme, the part that people remember when they actually think of this track. This could be a vocal, a lead synth, even a percussion groove. It's up to you to decide what's the hook of your track. In more underground and minimal styles, the hook can be a bit less obvious to identify. A good way to identify the hook is to mute everything and then turn on the smallest number of elements you can in order to identify immediately that it's your track. So now we're gonna add in the hook. Now for this track, I would say the vocal. I believe in a brighter future. future, future, future. But it's not playing so often. So I think the combination of the vocal and this pluck groove actually make up the hook. I believe. I 
believe in a brighter future. If you heard those two elements play together in isolation, you'd know that this is that track. Right? So in this case, I'm actually going to start with the pluck groove because it's playing more frequently. Minus 20. Minus 20, minus 19. Okay, so minus 19.5. Now let's bring in the vocal and I'm going to loop this up at the end as I did with some of the... And I'm going to loop this up at the end as I did with some of the other elements so that it plays more regularly. I believe in a brighter future. Okay, minus 13. I believe in a brighter future. 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 Okay. All right, so minus 12 is the average. Next is time to bring in the supporting synth and vocal elements in order of importance. Again, I'll use the balancing technique I showed you earlier in order to find the correct volume for these elements. And once again, it's important to identify any elements that are unnecessary and get rid of them. So now it's time to bring in the secondary melodic elements. This fast pluck. So minus 25. I okay, so let's put that to minus 23.5. So it just still sounded a tiny bit quiet for me, so I just added an extra dB to that. Now we've got this melodic texture, which is really doing exactly that, just adding some texture. So it's quite going to be quite low in the mix, I'd say. So that's sounding about right to me. So now it's time to add any additional elements like effects. And crashes is another one that I find similar to claps. I tend to put it too loud and I want to err on the side of caution because in the club it can just be overpowering. Because it's just playing at that one point, I'm just restarting the loop over and over so I can hear it again. Yeah, 
minus 23. Cool. So with the effects elements, I find the best practice is just to listen through. And when things sound like they're jumping out at you or you can't hear them, they're not doing making their intended purpose, it's time to adjust them a little bit. I find like one to three dB adjustments at a time works best. All right, so that's sounding about right to me. Let's listen through and see how it goes. Now it's always important to use your ears, of course. So I think that the shaker is a bit too loud for my taste. So it always comes down to what you're hearing and a matter of taste. So if you think something needs to be adjusted, despite having gone through this process, then adjust it. Yeah, sounds good to me. I'm not gonna lie to you, there is more to mixing than just balancing elements in the mix, but having a well-balanced mix is paramount to getting a good end result. Another thing that I haven't touched on here, which really influences the end result of your mix, is choosing the right elements in the first place. So here's a video about creative ways to source vocals for your tracks. You should definitely check that one out. Anyway, that's it from me. I'll catch you next time. Peace.